All right, hello everyone. My initial reaction when I read the Newcastle News editorial board opinion was a feeling of anger. As I reread it numerous times, I was I settled on disappointment, on a feeling of just utter disappointment. Disappointment at a local paper views city politics so corrupt that the editorial board resorted to negative tactics to try to sway voters to adopt the proposed home rule government in next week's primary. Instead of focusing on the many positive reasons to vote for the initiatives, such as the ability to restructure an old, outdated tax system, a point they almost make in passing, and explaining the numerous benefits to the city residents, they resorted in negative commentary. Unfortunately, that's something we've become accustomed to over the past few years in the political environment. The opposition attacks using catchphrases and scare tactics. Newcastle fell behind not because of the government, but because those who ran the government and took advantage of our neighbors. Calling the city riff with cronyism and dysfunctional and suggesting that it may be run by someone with no knowledge of budget is very unfair. Citing incompetence as a plague on the city, the opinion piece smears, insults, and degrades dozens of city employees. Our clerical workers, our code and zoning officers, our tax collectors, our public works employees, our police officers, our firefighters, our executive personnel, and our administrators. What our city lacks is capacity, capacity to do more, capacity to put professionals in positions who can go for grants and private dollars to move, help move our city forward economically. As mayor, I'm proud of the men and women that serve this city at a time when revenue is down and they are asked to do more and more with less and less resources and help, all for a modest salary. I'm proud of these employees that worked tirelessly through the pandemic last year and continue to serve the public every day. This so-called group of incompetence patiently and deliberately worked through the pandemic to institute plans to save the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. So in 2021, we did not have to raise the property tax. It was that discipline and that attention to detail that helped us move forward. Some of the plans that we implemented were recognized by Act 4017 and were used to, as examples in municipalities across the Commonwealth. What the editorial board sees as negative, the direct election of a day-to-day -day mayor, many of you see as a positive. If you think a mayor is corrupt the, and only hires his cronies, then the voters can vote him or her out of office in the next term. Home rule charter. The home rule charter they're pushing will put an executive in charge of running the city. That individual will have to answer the city council, not you, not the voters. Under home rule, the voters will have no direct control of who oversees the city. I've spoken to other home rule charter communities, the residents, the grassroots, the folks on the ground, and they are their number one problem or issue with home rule is that they do not have access or open communication with their city administrator. What if that person is corrupt? Now there's an extra layer to eliminating that corruption. The voters will need to elect a majority of council to clean house. The editor must believe that the majority of council, which will now be four members if home rule passes, will not fall victim to the cronyism that plagued the city. In my opinion, and in my year and five months experience as mayor, I see the difficulties that the city has gone through over the last few decades. And I see where many of that, those issues precipitated from. City Council is our legislative body and the mayor's executive body. Everything that is voted on, ordinances and policies, come from City Council. 
We have to hope that that person council chooses won't worry so much about keeping their job, which currently in our system of government, the mayor doesn't have to worry about. We have to hope that that person doesn't become a puppet, a puppet and will provide cover for the majority of council. Changing the system is no guarantee that the problem the news will see will be eliminated, which is why they would have served the community so much better if they had taken the time to fully educate you about the details of this proposed initiative. I see pros and cons on either side of the debate. I reserve my choice for the voting booth. The proposed new government isn't a guarantee to keep out corruption, nor is it a guarantee to change our economic situation. More importantly, Tuesday isn't a vote against cronyism and corruption. This is a vote about the city's future. I encourage you to study the issue. The charter document is on our webpage, newcastlepa.org. There's numerous comments and commentary that has been collected on social media. Take your time to study those, this issue and decide for yourself what system you think is best to move the city forward. And do not be swayed by negative political statements by either side. Yet, educate yourself and vote your conscience on Tuesday. Thank you.